We have a shadow minister standing by, Wes Streeting, because outsourcing scans are hitting the NHS hard in the pocket. Over the past five years, more than a billion pounds has been spent on referring people to outside companies for things like X-rays, MRIs or CT scans. You might, in fact, be waiting for one. You at home, uh, do let us know if you are. A health minister confirmed the figures to the Labour Party and the Shadow Health Secretary, Wes Streeting, joins us now. Very good morning to you, Wes Streeting. Good morning. Um, right, so what are you going to do if you get in uh, in order to uh, help out the NHS? That would be your job? Yeah, absolutely. Well, Labour's got a commitment to double the number of CT and MRI scanners over the course of the Parliament, a fully costed, fully funded plan that would not only give the NHS more scanners, but the latest scanners. And with the latest AI-enabled technology, we can see a transformation, actually, in the number of scans we can do and what that does for the outcomes for patients. In stroke, for example, these AI-enabled scanners can triple the number of stroke victims who come through it without a disability because they can go through those cases much faster and therefore dramatically improve outcomes. And if you think about the sort of transformation that could make to a stroke victim's outcomes uh, in terms of their quality of life and also in terms of the consequences for potential ongoing care, whether in the NHS or social care, this sort of kit is a game changer. The challenge yeah, no, is it's currently only no. in one or one, yep. one in every 20 NHS trusts has scanners like yes. this. So we've got to get this out across the no NHS. No doubt at all about the value of, of tech. Uh, when it comes to um, scanning for for illness, but I just want to go back to your fully costed. How how are you going to? How much is this, and how are you going to pay for it? This is 171 million pounds, and it forms part of the 1.6 billion pounds that Labour's allocated to the NHS by abolishing the non-dom tax status. And at small C Conservative estimates, abolishing the non-dom tax status will raise around two billion pounds. 1.6 billion will go into the NHS, including the scanners, and the rest will go into funding free primary school breakfast clubs yes, in every school yes, so that kids start the day with hungry that. minds, okay. not hungry bennies. OK, because originally you'd suggested that scrapping the non-DOM system would raise more than £3 billion. You've quite downgraded uh, that estimate, haven't you? Yeah, and, and look, look, Rachel Reeves is, uh, I think understandably cautious. So, despite the initial estimate being that it had raised £3 billion, she only allocated uh, a portion of that because, as, as you've seen in recent weeks from other Labour announcements, we are going through line by line uh, proposals uh, for Labour's manifesto to make sure that every promise we make can be delivered yes. and afforded by the country. Some would and say Rachel's that you're prudence going has been quite right. a series of U-turns. Um, well, and that promises that you've made that, that are quite eye-catching, including we could raise £3.2 billion pounds, um, if you force non-DOMs to pay tax, which apparently was going to cover an enormous recruitment drive of much-needed NHS staff as well as breakfast clubs. You've now halved that. That is quite the U-turn. No, uh, we've, we've always said 1.6 billion would go to the NHS. What changed was the workforce plan Labour was putting forward to be funded by the non-DOM tax mm. status. We, we, we managed to press the government into nicking our plan instead and they've no, funded on, it sorry, differently. No, but sorry, we're treating... Originally, you said that scrapping the non-DOM system completely would raise £3.2 billion. Pounds. That's twice what you're no now saying. Well, we've said, we've said that now our, our revised estimate is £2 billion. We never, we never committed to spend more than two billion. billion. We've never, we've never committed to spending more than the two billion that is now allocated, and that's because Rachel Reeves is very sharp, very prudent, and very careful what? about the spending commitments that she's making. But Sorry, as I say, it, sound, it, it might sound to viewers like you're just plucking numbers out of a hat. No, it was Susanna, three point two billion, then it was one point six billion, and now it's two billion. No, hang on, look, hang on a second. Let me just break this down, because I'm not sure you're following the figures. No, I'm sorry, I'm One, not. No, sorry, Susanna, no, you're wrong about this. £1.6 billion has always been the amount we've allocated to the NHS. £2 billion has always been the amount we've committed to use from the non-DOM envelope overall. The only thing that's changed is 
the overall amount we are estimating to raise from the non-DOM tax status. Okay. And that's because we, we used independent academic figures and we made a conscious decision to go at the lower end of the predictions of what non-DOMs will raise because we would rather under-promise and then potentially over-deliver rather than do what the Tories have done, which is over-promise and then under-deliver. And if there's one thing that's an even shorter supply in our country at the moment than money, it's trust in politics and politicians. And that's why we make no apology for the fact whatsoever that where we are looking again at announcements we've made or policies that people have mm. wanted us to pursue, if we don't think it can be delivered or if we don't think the country can afford it, it's not going to be in our manifesto. Okay. And that's the process we've been going through. But the two billion overall, that, that figure that we've committed to use from non-DOMs, that has never changed. The only thing that changed was that the 1.6 billion that we were going to spend on the NHS workforce, the government have nicked the plan but funded it differently. And so we've said as a result, we will use that 1.6 billion pounds okay. to put 1.1 billion into cutting NHS waiting list with two million more appointments a year. Uh, uh, another 171 uh, million on doubling the number of CT and MRI scanners and the rest will go into NHS okay. dentistry okay. where it is sorely needed. Okay, so no more 3.2. That is 3.2 billion raised. That is now revised down to 2 billion. That's, that's, that's clear. Right. Thank you. That's right. And Mr Streeting, talking about trust in politics, there's a by-election happening in Rochdale. Um, you are now asking people... Well, at least um, you were asking people to vote for a Labour candidate, but he's no longer the officially endorsed Labour candidate uh, anymore. Keir Starmer made tackling anti-Semitism central to his leadership. Why did it take so long for you to realise that Azar Ali was an unsuitable candidate and had said anti-Semitic things last weekend? Well, firstly, I think it is a reflection of Keir's commitment to robustly tackling anti-Semitism within our party, that we took the unprecedented decision that even after the nominations have closed and it's impossible to remove his name from the ballot paper and to put a different Labour candidate forward, we have pulled all support from Azhar Ali and refused to back him as Labour's candidate. That's unprecedented. The second thing is that, you know, these allegations came to light in the Sunday newspapers. He was gone as a Labour candidate on the Monday. Now, I don't think that's a, a, a the long problem is, time. Mr. I think Streeting, that is fast action. The problem is, Mr Streeting, that the Times now reports that you had access to the full transcript of what he'd said on the Saturday, the day before. The story came out on the Sunday. On that same day, Lisa Nandy in the Shadow Cabinet was uh, appearing with him and it took a further 24 hours to realise that having backed him, you weren't backing him anymore. I mean, it was shambolic that nobody seemed to have actually listened to the transcript and realised what he'd said on this, you know, in this meeting. Well, it is an unprecedented situation and I'm really sorry to people in Rochdale that I can't come on your programme and say there's a good Labour candidate to vote for. And, and I'm, I'm even more disappointed that this is someone uh, in the Labour Party who's previously uh, made some laudable comments on tackling anti-Semitism, but has fallen well short of the standards that Keir Starmer expects, and I think actually the country I guess would Mr. expect Speaking, though, of our politicians. I can't imagine you saying this to people in Ilford, but clearly no. candidates thought that pandering in this way and saying anti-Semitic things was an acceptable thing to do in a meeting trying to persuade voters in this case, Muslim voters, to stay on side, it does sort of raise a question about whether Labour is actually gripping this issue as hard as Keir Starmer wants to, whether this is actually happening on the ground around the country. Well, I think it would be unfair to tar Labour candidates with the same brush. We've got a brilliant field of candidates at this election and they know that Keir Starmer expects the highest standards and that's why action was not only taken against Azhar Ali for peddling conspiracy theories, but uh, disciplinary action has also been taken against another Labour candidate who was present and he may not have said anti-Semitic things, but the content and tone of what he said fell far short of 
what Keir expects of Labour candidates. And, and so there is a, a message there that we are taking this seriously. We have expelled people from anti -Semitism, for anti-Semitism in the Labour Party. Other people who think we've been too tough on anti-Semitism have left the party. Good riddance. Labour is not the party for them, if that's the view that they hold. And it should be a further warning to people uh, that anti-Semitic or for any other racist conduct in the Labour Party will not be tolerated and action will be taken. Although a week ago it was a shambles, wasn't it? Well, look, I, I'm not going to pretend, Ed, that this has been Labour's finest hour. We've got people going to the polls in Rochdale who don't have a good land, Labour candidate to vote for. Mm. I, I'm really sorry that's the case. I think it's an appalling position uh, to be in. But I, 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 what I wouldn't uh, want is for Labour to stand by someone who's peddled anti-Semitic conspiracy theories. And that's why Keir's taken this unprecedented action uh, in this way, even after nominations have closed. And okay. all we can say to the people of Rochdale is we'll give them a better choice at the general We're election. We're treating Shadel Sekte. Thank you very much. Here are the candidates standing in the Rochdale by-election. Um, Kevin, Andrew... As we say goodbye to West Streeting, two issues in that. The persistent struggle with anti-Semitism. Mm, huge. And U-turns Yeah, over and, and, and that policies. candidate didn't just peddle conspiracy theories, he said anti-Semitic things. He really did. It was horrible. Oh, yeah. Just because... horrible. And as Ed points out, <coughs> they had the transcript and they did nothing about mm. it for 40 hours. They tried <coughs> to get away with it, they tried to stick by him. What... And the U-turns... They were know, worried about George Galloway, I think. They really are. Yeah, well, it was a fiasco and a shambles. And why didn't somebody read it? I mean, like the whole famed well, Labour. They probably did and thought they'd get away with it. Defence, press operation, failed yeah. absolutely miserably. It was horrible really anti semitic But on the spending, though, I, th I think what's uh, most remarkable about Labour is the uh, modesty of what it's offering, actually. <laughs> For an oh, election, left, when you oh, want to win, Kev, you, you, you would like them to raise agenda. more. Well, he wants uh, a Corbyn they, agenda. They, 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 Rachel Reid, the shadow chancellors, shut off uh, income tax rises, national insurance rises, corporation tax rises, capital gains tax rises. Bring back Jeremy no, Corbyn. No wealth tax, no mansion tax. Bring back Jeremy Corbyn. Bring yeah. that Ed Miliband. Andrew, yeah. Kevin, thank, thank you, you very, very much. much indeed.